Okay, this is kind of fun. This is the first time I've done a video sort of by request. Uh, I'm going to try to recreate the turmeric roasted cauliflower over labna with honey and oranges that I had at a restaurant the other day. Um, it seems to be pretty simple techniques. Um, what I'm going to start with is uh, some quinoa. I wanted to get just the plain white quinoa, but this is what they had at the store. Uh, the store was very picked over. It's almost like at the beginning of the pandemic where so much stuff is not there. And this is all that they had. This is going to be a little bit more difficult to kind of distinguish when the brown and the darker quinoas have kind of popped. And we're going to pop this just like popcorn. I will admit, I don't particularly love quinoa when it's cooked. To me, it's very earthy and kind of dirty and bitter tasting. Um, I'll eat it, but it's not my favorite thing. But I really like doing it this way because you're just popping it in a dry pan the way that you would pop popcorn. And it's more about toasty flavors and texture than it is about the um, the the actual flavor of the quinoa. It's, it's, it's a garnish, not the main course. So here we go. So in order, in order to toast our quinoa, we're going to do it, like I said, just like a toasted popcorn. Uh, what you want to do is put a pan. Um, this would be a great for a cast iron pan, but I'm using a, a stainless steel pan so you can see the color change, which you wouldn't be able to see against the black backdrop of the cast iron. I'm going to put in a little drop of water, and there we go. Once it does that, it shows me that it's hot enough. The water's evaporating. Ooh. Rinse that out. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in the quinoa and then start moving it. This is over a pretty high heat. I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit. Uh, you can hear them popping already. There you go. If you want to keep them in, like a Jiffy Pop, you can set that there. Kind of keep them moving. But it happens very quickly. Once your pan is nice and hot, they toast up very, very fast. Look at that. Eh, a couple of them are flying out of the pan, but I think it's I think it's better for you to see this than for me to worry about a little bit of quinoa on my stove, which obviously needs to be cleaned as it is. So I'm not even sitting on the pan or on the heat. The pan is so hot that the quinoa is just kind of toasting in the residual heat. I'm seeing some smoke, which I want to stop. And that's how quickly that goes. And like with popcorn, once you stop hearing the popping, I'm gonna pour it out into a bowl. There we go. See how it's hard to tell if some of those darker ones are slightly burnt or if those are the more dark ones. You can see some of the quinoa's actually popped the way that um, popcorn would pop. Not all of them are going to do that. Uh, but some of them will. And that's how we get our little texture, our little textural garnish. So now that we got our quinoa done, I'm going to marinate our cauliflower. I have here a head and a half of cauliflower that I cut into uh, relatively large florets. Some of them are smaller just because that's the nature of the produce. Uh, I'm doing a head and a half because I, I bought a head and I had a whole half of a head sitting in my refrigerator, so I figured why not do it all? Um, I'm going to put in a little sprinkle of salt. This is just some diamond kosher sea salt, a little grinding of pepper, and I'm totally recreating this, so I have no idea uh, what the spices the were in the, well, I mean, I, I kind of know what the spices were because I could taste them, um, but this is where it would come down to, um, and it's one of the things I love about teaching cooking, at the same time is also frustrating about teaching cooking, is people often think that recipes are a, like the blueprint to building Notre Dame Cathedral or something. And if you, if you, uh, you know, don't follow it exactly, the whole thing is going to fall down. Um, I have here uh, about a half a teaspoon of turmeric. That should be the majority of the spice because that's called turmeric roasted ca uh, cauliflower. I have a quarter of a teaspoon of cumin and a quarter of a teaspoon of some nice smoked paprika. Um, if you don't like turmeric that much, 
don't put that much in. If you love it, put some more in. Um, you could put in some cayenne pepper. You could use some, this would be really great to use something like a garam masala or even a curry powder or Chinese five spice powder would be nice. I would really like to have some ground coriander in here, but I don't have either whole coriander seeds or ground coriander. Um, and I wasn't running out to the store just to get spices for a demo. So that's what I'm using for this. I'm, the point is we want this to kind of marinate with a good couple glugs of olive oil. And then I know my hands are clean, so I'm going to stick them in there and just toss it all around. You really wanna get everything nice and coated. It's smelling really good. That's, I mean, that's the that's the cumin, and I'm getting some of the smoke from the from the paprika. And I will say, uh, when I had this dish the other day for lunch, um, it did need a little bit of heat. But I think I'm going to add a little bit of heat at the end. But if you wanted to put in some some cayenne pepper or even some red chili flakes, go for it. You're you're making it for you. But that's got the yellow color that I want. I think the spices are spread out nice and evenly. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. And I'll let that marinate for about an hour or so. I, with vegetables, I don't think it would be bad to let it marinate overnight. Um, but I want to give it a little time just so the um, cauliflower picks up that flavor and absorbs it. All right, so now that that has been marinating for about an hour, just at room temperature, if it had been going for a little longer than that, I would have put them into the oven, I mean, into the refrigerator. I'm just gonna spread this out on a baking sheet with some tin foil. It's always a good idea for cleanup. Spread them out so they're nice and evenly spread out, kind of have the florets turned up. All the little small pieces kind of push into the center because you sort of get more heat on the sides. So I'm going to put the bigger pieces out there. Um, this doesn't need to have any uh, uh, anything on the tin foil because there's oil on the cauliflower and um, they're not going to stick. Uh, and I'm going to pop it into a 425 degree oven for, I will check them in 15 minutes. Probably going to take more around 25 or 30, but let's see how they go. So while the cauliflower is cooking, I'm going to show you how we're going to get our orange segments. Uh, I have a nice, well, hopefully it's nice, it feels good, uh, navel orange. I'm gonna cut off the top and the bottom. And what I'm gonna do, that's a nice, really thick rind. I'm gonna cut and be kind of ruthless about it. I'm gonna cut while, while sort of going at an angle. I wanna get all of this white stuff off because that's the pith and it's very bitter. If I really wanted to be fussy and like utilize everything, I could cut out the rind like this and then dry it and use it for like winter teas. Actually, I think I'm going to do that. That sounds really good as I was saying it. Um, Adam likes to make teas, so I'll save him the orange rinds. Uh, what I wanna get at is once you've gone all around, make sure that there's no white. You can see how there's the little membranes. What I'm trying to do is get the segments. Let's see if you can see this here. I have no cameraman, so I'm doing this all myself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find one segment there and cut through to the center and then cut through the other segment. And there you go. You get your little, you get your little slice of orange with none of that, um, the white membranous stuff. Uh, some people don't mind that. I, it's, I, I think this is more about the aesthetics and sort of the texture, because again, that white part could be kind of bitter. You'll end up with some that have a couple pieces in there and it's all right. If you see any big seeds, you can pull them out. I'm just gonna go around and cut out these, oh, there's lots of seeds in here. This is obviously not a navel orange. And then you just do that until you have the whole orange done. Then also while our cauliflower is roasting, uh, this is labna. You could use Greek yogurt if you can't find this at your store. This is just basically um, yogurt that has been thickened. You put it in a cheesecloth or a filter and water drips out so it's, it's thicker. It's, 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 less, it's less watery, but it's got the same flavor, the same uh, uh, texture, only just thicker. 
Um, so this is gonna be the bed that our cauliflower sits on. It's gonna be a nice counterpoint because it's gonna be the, the creaminess and some of the fat. Um, I do wanna season this a little, so I'm gonna put in a little black pepper. Some people would say if you're using something white, you wanna put in white pepper. I think white pepper is disgusting. Um, to me, it tastes like feet and smells like old socks. I tell all my students that. Um, and I'd rather have little black flecks and the taste of pepper than to have my bechamel sauce or my chowder or whatever it tastes like um, old gym socks. And then a little pinch of salt, but I mean, I mean like a little, just, just like that. Just enough to give it some savoriness. And um, then I'm gonna stir it up. I'm gonna actually put in a little bit of olive oil to thin it out. Stir it up. Uh, here again, you could stir in, oh, you could stir in whatever you want to this. This would actually be a great place to stir in some heat if you wanted to put in some cayenne pepper to this um, to give a base of the fattiness and the creaminess with some of the heat of a pepper. But I'm gonna leave that as it is and I'm gonna sprinkle some peppers over it when I'm, I'm done. All right, so the cauliflower was in for a total of about 25 minutes. Uh, how you like your vegetables done is another thing that's totally up to you. They could have gone another 10 minutes or so if you like them really soft. I like my vegetables to have a little bit of a al dente-ness to them, a little bit of bite. Um, I generally knew at the French Culinary Institute if the vegetables were good for me, some of the other chefs were going to want them to cook a little while longer. Um, that's all personal taste, no right or wrong. So what I'm going to do is while they're cooling off, I'm going to take my labna and spread it out. It's gonna be sort of the base of our dish. A nice little spoon. There we go. I have some, some nice local honey that I microwave for a couple seconds just to get it nice and pourable. I'm not gonna use the whole thing. There we go. And then let's actually put a little bit of our Puffed quinoa, a couple pieces of orange around the center. And then I'm going to arrange my roasted cauliflower on top. I like to get the, the florets sort of pointed up. Got some nice toasted ones there on top. And then what we are going to do, sprinkle a little bit more of the toasted quinoa. Uh, I have this, it's some microgreens. If you had some chopped cilantro, that would be fine. I just, I had to be a little bit extra because I just kind of had to. <laughs> um, and then, as I said, I'm gonna do a little bit of heat. Uh, I like the heat from sriracha. So rather than have the heat in the labna or the heat on in the, the marinade of the cauliflower, I actually kind of want to do a couple, oh, is that even open? No way, it's a new bottle of Sriracha. Excellent. Nice and fresh. Shake it up. I'm gonna do a couple little drops. Um, also gives it a little bit of color, so a little bit of red. Um, what I, well also would be really nice here, um, and I thought about getting them at the store, but they were like $4, I was only gonna use a couple, would be some nice um, pomegranate seeds could go nicely on there. But that looks and smells exactly the way I want it to. Uh, I will make this video. This was very fun to do as a request. And uh, I will have this for my lunch.